<laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Welcome his, to History Hyenas with Giannis Pappas and Chris Stefano. If you're asking what the hell was that, yes, that are those are cackling hyenas over a freestyle beat because we are fucking too wild savage animals that deserve to be put down another way you could say that is that is the greatest intro song to any podcast you will ever hear we crack up laughing every time it starts playing because this is the history hyenas we are wild for nature and history bad bad, bad. over and over again and today we got our cast of characters we got chrissy d yanni p we got zach a sound engineer who looks like an isis recruit we got Bardo Church, who is in fact a wasp and comes from wasp heritage. He is, and uh, and uh, it bothers him to be in this room right it now. Does. It does. You can't help it. Yeah. If you have, if your, if your lineage is from your ancestors or from Germanic tribes from Northern Europe, yep. at one time he was trapped. The, the irony is, my people used to, and you sit there and you think you're German. You ha you're not. You're Look not. His haircut, cause you are Italian trash I'm, to him. I'm calm to the alt right. And 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 and, and uh, Zach over here. It makes Bardo not Bardo's not gonna be able to eat till nine yeah. p.m. because he was around his beard and his glasses got he's got a band aid holding his glasses together. Yeah, Bardo, it, it's deep in a wasp's soul. Disgusting. He, he's to be disgusted by Debo's yeah. sitting here. He's just looking at ethnic yeah. Southern European trash. But the irony is, my people used to look at his people like trash because Greeks were the first civilized people and his people were running around in fucking tribes. We called them barbarians. They were named barbarians because they weren't Hellenic. They weren't civilized. They were fucking trash. Wild. And we talked about them last week, the Vikings. That's right. Um, and uh, Giannis mentioned Debo, James Bernardo. We got one of my friends from home, Debo. One of the most oh, esteemed scholars, yeah. historians. Yeah, he. we we uh, we were all walking around, and we talked about, uh, you know, time machines. And Giannis and I both said that we would like to go back in time to, Giannis said Greco-Roman um, time. I said, you know, colonial America, which we'll talk about today. And Debo said 1986 <laughs> when the Mets won the World Series. So that's the kind of that's the kind of human trash you're dealing with today in the podcast. He's our one guest, and he's just a hefty bag with a heartbeat. Uh, he works at JetBlue. He's a pilot. He's a he tells girls he's a pilot, but he actually loads the bags onto the plane. I am. But a pilot. it doesn't matter. I'm he a gets pilot. a lot of puss. He's a and, pilot, and he had a nice run until uh, he ran into a female pilot, and she asked him a simple question. Um, she said, uh. What uh? What what did she what did she ask you? She asked me what equipment do I work? I was what, a, what equipment I fly, and then I just stopped. And you said seven forty seven. That yeah, was no, the answer. Eight three eighty. Yeah, that was the answer. He just named the type of plane and uh, and Airbus. It's been dried since then. Yeah, but he and said, we're well, going to Germany. And we're going to Germany yeah. uh, at the end of the year. Um, we're going to go to the Oktoberfest. Debo's going to come with us and our friend Pat Finnegan. And uh, most likely, I would say that the group that we're going out with, we're going out with 15 guys. Probably 13 will come back. <laughs> I think we'll lose. We're going to lose a couple guys. I think we'll lose a we're couple. We're going with all fighter fighters. Firefighters. Yeah. yeah. We're going with, with full-blown FDNY guys. Um, and you know, one pilot, just in case. Just in case, yes. Yeah, we have to the fly plane. out of there. Yeah, we got we got that. So, and look, it's going to be dope. Um Today we we just came off. Wait, uh, you got you got your Wender hosen for it too, right? Oh yeah, I got my my leader hosen. You bought a leader hosen for a hundred bucks. It was a President Day sale. He actually bought leader hosen. Yeah, he sent me he sent me a text. He goes, "You want me to pick you up one?" Cause I thought he was joking. Yeah, and then he sent me another text. Purchased hundred yeah. bucks leader hosen. Yeah, I'll re hold on. Wait, I'll read. I'll, I'll let me just. Find Are you it. gonna wear that? I'm gonna wear it, cause you, I, dude. Why you, not? Dude, you're buy at least at yeah. least a little buy. Yeah, here, wait, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you. I said, um. We were talking, and uh, I, I was dead serious about about buying these things, and I did. And um, and Giannis, I said to him, I said, Giannis, what about these for Germany? I said, what size are you? And he wrote, ha, 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 because you move around so funny. This got me good because you're a real funny guy. Then I sent him a receipt of me buying it, and his next texts are, are you fucking seriously mentally ill, cuz? You're buy at least, no question, no question, caps lock. You're out of your mind. You bought that. What the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, I think I think this is you. You're definitely at least bisexual. <laughs> yeah, there's no question. You can't be. A sh I guess Germans move around in those lederhosen. They, they wear those. Yeah, they yeah. wear those bats like baby overalls. Yeah, we yeah. Maybe, maybe we should have ISIS Google the uh, origin of lederhosen. We'll do a whole episode on lederhosen. Yeah. Right now, if you're listening, you're probably saying, "I'm curious about lederhosen." You might want to Google it. Google it quick. But you know what? We'll do an episode where we get into every single detail of Lederhosen one day. Oh yeah. Once we go once we go once to we Ger go wild like that. When we go to actually go to Germany, 
that those episodes the, the first of all we're gonna do we're probably gonna do weeks and weeks and weeks of episodes leading up about european history we'll fucking german. learn german and do them in german that's no, how wild we I'm are i'm going on tours when we get out to munich Absolutely. i want to go on tours bad a lot of people look at Giannis and i and think that we put up sheetrock but we go on walking tours religiously religiously we got the, the we went on a history tour today it's called the, um it's called the big onion BigOnion.com, Big Onion Walking Tours. They, they are not a sponsor of the show, but maybe one day they will be. I'm genuinely just shouting them out because it was the best walking tour I've ever been on. Um, the, the tour guide's name was Alice, um, and uh, Giannis wanted to clean her out bad. Well, um, that, now there goes her, her ever being on the podcast, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> we'll edit it out. We'll edit it out, folks. <laughs> clean her out means clean her out of knowledge. No, I want exactly. to sit down with her yeah. and learn all. <laughs> learn all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you go off the trails quick. Cause I'm fucking you go no off the filter. Tra- if I gave, if we gave, if Bartle came down and gave us a roadmap and said, "This is how you get to the top of the hill," you're like, "Nah," cause I want to cut through the bushes. Yeah, you cut through the bushes, bad, bad. You're constantly. That's cutting. why I got psoriasis, cause yeah, she had a lot of knowledge, and I would love to clean her out of that knowledge. Of that knowledge, yeah. I mean, she's got a lot of historical knowledge. She was fantastic. Debo was with us. He 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 strung along with us, and it was great. Um, Debo was asking wild questions like. Um, you know, Debo said uh, he thought that the um, inauguration of George Washington happened in Minnesota, uh, <laughs> which is fucking beyond nuts. Um, but we, but were, we were looking at the Wall Street, uh, the, yeah. the architecture of the stock exchange. He go, I go, yeah, it's Greco. I said Greco Roman. Yeah. First of all, Greco Roman architecture is probably the Michael Jordan of architecture. Yeah, and I think that's why you want to take a time machine back to Greco Roman style because in the Greco Roman era, bisexuality was commonplace, <laughs> and Giannis is a true bi. True bi. I, yeah. It's in me. Like I'm Greek. You yeah. know, it, I'm not gay, but if I went to jail, I'd probably be put, pretty good at it. Yeah. Bye, it, bye, 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 yeah. bye. <laughs> He's the lemon fool for you. Just another player in the game. Yo, Insync was dope. They were dope. I know every member of Insync. Do you Ask listen me. to that in the shower? Ask me who every member of Insync is. Go ahead. Justin Timberlake, Boom. J.C. Chavez, Chris Kirkpatrick, Lance Bass, Joey Fatone. Bang. Give me a dick in this. Yas. Yes. We, we need a yas button. We need yas. yas. We need Joey Camasta to... Uh, we need Joey Camaster to uh, to record it. Absolutely. Look up Joey Camaster, good friend of ours, good friend of the podcast. So anyway, I said, uh, yeah, it's a Greco-Roman architecture. I was pointing at the stock market, and Debo goes, what makes you Greco-Roman? The columns? <laughs> yeah, because. I was like, yeah, yeah, the columns. Yeah. <laughs> Debo was great. We, every time we was a walking tour through New York, and Debo wanted to stop and get a hot dog every 10 feet. Bam. Yeah. He was looking at those hot dog vendors like, cuz, you think I got time to stop and get a hot dog? Yo, how funny were those hot dog vendors and the guys with the pamphlets who were just interrupting the tour to try to sell you hot dogs? Bro. Like pretzels, hot dogs. Like, dude, come on. We're doing a history tour here. But this is the way New York has been since day one. Yeah. Literally since day one. So, all right. Here's where we'll start. Okay. Today's about, as we teased last week, colonial America, the Revolutionary War. We're going to get specifically into espionage in the Revolutionary War because it was it's the only time where you want to be a fucking rat. It's acceptable is when you're a spy for the good guys, the red, white, and blue. That's the only time being a fucking dirty rat stool pigeon is no problem because we need you to get secrets and uh, spies encourage not to keep their mouth shut. They have to tell us what's going on. So here's what happened. And you need spies when you're at a disadvantage like that. When you're just when you are just like a band of revolutionaries, yeah. like the Sons of Liberty when they were forming. You guys are at a disadvantage. You're conquered. Those are your conquerors, basically. Right. So you need spies to be able to get the upper hand. Right. You know, to get an advantage because you're outnumbered, you're outgunned, et cetera. Right. And, he, and, and, and something that you learn, like, when you look into history, like, you know, as you know, the winners write the history books, right? The losers don't write the history books. The winners write the history books. So we'll start off with how the revolution, how it all began. Why, why were we even upset about Why did we even want to get away from England? Well... French and Indian War, right? Fucking French, as always. Like, you know, I love that, you know, and Giannis and I, you spoke about this before, how we always shit on France. You know, like, we're always like, oh, France this, French that, fuck the French. And they send their entire army to bail us out and give us our independence. We needed them back then. We needed them back we then. We needed them back yeah. then. Yeah. yeah. But that was really their last great stand. Yeah. That was, a, that was really, like, their last great mo- military moment. Yeah. Was probably helping yeah. us with Lafayette. And yeah, they didn't the- put out anything really good until the Pink Panther. That was the next big thing they put out. <laughs> Pink Panther was dope. Yeah. Yeah. I they mean, had- they, they rolled over yeah. after that. They had Marquis Lafayette. They gave us our independence and then pretty much shit for 250 years. Then Pink Panther came out and I went to see it back. <laughs> it was- I went fucking wild for the Pink Panther. Peter Sellers was good. Peter Sellers. I- I'm a Steve Martin Pink Panther guy, but that is what it is. Yeah. Well, but anyway. I'm older listen, than you. Here's how it starts. The French and Indian War. Okay. And Indian, by the way, yeah. 
podcast we know is not a socially acceptable term. Yeah, what's a socially acceptable? Let's call Native America. No, that's not even good. Native Americans isn't good. No, because you're otherizing other people. Oh, that's right. You can't otherize. So um, the French and they're Lou persons. Diamond, Lou Diamond Phillips. Persons is... of indigenous origins. origins. Yes, empowered persons of indigenous origins of the Americas. But you can't even say America because that is the pa- right. the patriarchy, the white male patriarchies named it america right so So native lands but native lands means it was named by the patriarchy so we're gonna have to learn native indian languages to properly yeah to properly refer to that and so because we don't just make a noise to do it the people well that and that and that we know can be associated with african tribes but we're talking about specifically native american tribes so let how about this how about this this is a a maze of offending people how about this how about this because we don't want to offend anyone let's just say the french and then moment of silence (laughs) war okay there there we we go go. just the french and then we're going to take two seconds and that you can fill in what you want to fill in to not otherize or disrespect anybody's culture it's just the french two seconds blank war war so that happened. It was really the French versus the British. So you know they say Indians because the uh, the French uh, had um, Indians um, or Native Americans, whatever you want to say, what at the time just the Native people helping them. And uh, uh, it was a, it was the first time that you know they they tried to conquer North America. Br- Britain wa- Britain and France both were fighting for North America. So uh, 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 the British win, and. They're bankrupt. The British have no money left because they, I mean, how many freaking billions of dollars? Does it, it takes it's a lot of money it's a lot for of money. war. So they got cleaned out. The British, the British had no loot. So who do they look to? They look to the colonies, the 13 colonies, which they, they were always cool with them. You know, we, we, it's just like an extension of England were the 13 colonies, basically. All right. So it was just like we were like England's side piece in a way. Like, you know, like well, we were we used to be we were them. The people who came over here were yeah were, the Mayflower yeah the people came over yeah. the Mayflower and stuff yeah but you know what I mean but it's not like it's not, you don't look at Puerto Rico like they're Americans they are but you don't look at it like that what do you mean like a Puerto Rican to me it's an, a lot of people would be like oh Puerto Rico is another country but it's an American Commonwealth it, they're American citizens Puerto Ricans yeah exactly sort of yeah it's sort of the same that, thing. so that's yeah. what I'm talking about like that's that was the mindset of it back then it's like yeah. yes knowledgeable people people like us people that like you know respect the empire if you will we were like we would be like yeah of course Puerto Rico is a part of the country but you know people in the middle of the country or the fucking deep south like nah they ain't part of us that's what col- co- colonies were to England pretty much it's like they had us, but they didn't really respect us. But they didn't really fuck with us too much. But then comes about money. We, they get cleaned out uh, by the French and Indian War. Britain's got no money. So they start taxing the 13 colonies for really no reason. They just start taxing everything. They start taxing. Well, for good reason. Well, to, to get the money back. But I mean, according to us, no yeah. reason. Like, what we didn't, you know, we, yeah, we fought in your war. As a matter of fact, General George Washington was. Uh, a, uh, I think a colonel in the French and Indian War. Yeah. So he, so most of most of our great American heroes, George Washington, uh, Paul Revere, Alexander Hamilton, all these guys, they fought in the French and Indian War. They, yeah. I don't know if Hamilton did. He may have been. They too were young. basically Kevin Durant on OKC, and then they went to Golden State. Perfect basically. analogy. But they're still they were always basketball players. They're always they're always playing ball. They were always hooping. They're always they're always hooping. So, what happens then in 1765? We got what's called the Stamp Act, where Britain just turns around and says, "Listen, Cuzzy Wuzzies, we're just going to start. We're just." <laughs> they say King George. That's exactly how it happened, by yeah. the way. He said, "Listen, Cuzzy Wuzzies." King George was eating a slice, and he said, "Listen, listen, you fucking." He said, "Listen, Cuzzy Wuzzies." Listen, he said, "Listen, you fucking mooks." Yo, okay, gather around. Yo, uh, Cuzzy Wuzzies. Cuzzy Wuzzies. Listen, you know you guys. Do you think they still had the? When did they lose the accents? You think the Patriots? I've never heard that in any historical. Uh, documents or documentaries, books. When did like we got to research that? Like when did, you know did did like in other words, did George Washington was he like hello? My name is yes. George Washington. Well, they all they all had well because look, they were born and raised here. They were mm-hmm. born and raised in the colonies. You know, Washington's Virginia, Jefferson's Virginia, all these guys. But yeah, you had British people with British accents all around you. Yeah. But because we're so far away, we're on the other side of the ocean, it's not direct. Like you could still tell like who's from London. You know, people in England can tell, are you from Northern England, Southern England? Are you from Scotland? Like, to us, everybody just sounds like Shrek to me. I don't fucking know. (laughs) So we probably sounded to the Brits, the colonists, the colonialists, probably sounded to the Brits the way 
the Montreal Quebecers sound to France. The France. Exactly. They looked at us like, that's a goofy accent. Or like, we're speaking English, but like, you know, like the way Debo talks, yeah. like, D Debo, just say a couple of words. Just say, hello, my name's James Debo. Hello, my name is James Debo. Oh, yeah, yeah, see, like that? Yeah, Soaked you, in a fucking cannoli. So, yeah, you sound like a sewer cap that just came to life. You sound like a magical spell. I just fucking took a sewer, and you're talking. And you're speaking English, but to a British person, that's, gr you know, to Bardo, to Bardo and his wasp. He just dry air, heaved. He dry, he, seriously, he just started dry, <laughs> Bardo just started dry heaving. Google Bardo Church, and you will see he started dry heaving when Debo said that. And that's what was happening back then. The cologne, we were... Yes, we spoke the language and we were, you know, part of their territories. But the British soldiers, especially, they thought we were fucking filth, trash, just gross trash, including George Washington and Benjamin Franklin, our elite people who actually had uh, the ear of the king. They still thought we were fucking just dirty scum of the earth bullshit. So 1765 Stamp Act, we go fucking wild. We're like, no, you're not going to, you're not going to, no taxation without representation. That's basically what it was. And Benjamin Franklin was like, listen, 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 listen to me. He went over to England. Wait, he said, listen, cuz he's. He said, listen, he said, listen, cuz, look, I know I look, listen, he goes, <laughs> I only got a few minutes here because I got syphilis bad. My dick is fucking dripping. I banged, yo, he, Benjamin Franklin banged so many broads. It's, that's is why that it's called fact? Broad Street. That's why it's called Broad Street. That, yeah. Is that a fact? Bro, he died of syphilis. Benjamin Franklin was He used getting, to clean up bad? Because he got puss yeah. left and right. That's why he's face on the $100 bill. Really? Yeah, because he's got fucking Punani. Really? Yeah, that's why he's highest currency. They say, yeah. Yo, all of our, a lot of our greatest men, like, really cleaned up. Cleaned out, yeah. JFK, cleaned up. Cleaned up. Martin Luther King, cleaned, cleaned up. up. Benny Frank, cleaned, cleaned up. up. Derek Jeter, cleaned, cleaned up. up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cause these guys clean up. Yeah. So Benny Frank, yeah, Benny Frank was getting pussed left and right, and he eventually died of syphilis, as most people know. But that was a common thing. I mean, he would go to Paris. You know, he there was there, there, people used to say that ben, Benny Frank would like you know w need to talk to the French government, like he would make up some crisis that was happening in the colonies. So he needed to go. He needed the 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 colonial uh, the, the 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 American government to send it to Paris to like talk to the king, but really was, he just had puss out there. Yeah, yeah. He had puss. He had roadkill out yeah, there. Yeah, he had road. Yeah, he yeah. was yeah, he was stinking it up. Yeah. Yo, let me tell you, and two, I mean I you know, maybe we'll get to this one day, but the stench of the colonial times must have been fucking wild. That's another thing. Yeah. You always wonder about the accents and you don't always wonder how did they smell back then? Yeah, probably stunk bad. Probably like how how did they how often do you think they showered? I mean, showering was a luxury. Brushing your teeth was a luxury. Yeah. I mean, George Washington had wooden teeth. He did. Could you imagine how bad your teeth have to be to they're fucking made of wood? Probably got some splinters in your gums. Could you imagine that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they probably stunk bad, but you know what? Since everyone stank pretty bad, yeah. I bet you you could probably tell the class of the person just smelling them oh absolutely because i bet you like the like bardo's relatives oh they, yeah they he definitely his people in his background there's been a few guillotine there's been a few, his people his ancestors beheaded a few people a hundred percent and they burned a few people so i bet you like his ancestors if they came around they showered a lot and yeah. they could tell you could tell how what your socioeconomic status is based yeah. on smell like this guy's a lowly farmer if you if if bardo could press a button right now and bring his ancestors from colonial times into this room right now and he took one look around his colonial he his ancestors would would put themselves in the guillotine they would, they would cut their own heads off yeah. because of how they cannot believe how far the economy and how far society has fallen that bardo and his wasp ancestors are now even in the room with i mean you just put snooze in your mouth I you mean, understand he, you he, have chewing tobacco on your lip right now i know he's disgust bardo's bardo got hired by an Italian guy, an Italian guy from Sicily. He used to take an and he's order. half Jewish too. Isn't he Serpico half Jewish? Serpico's a fucking half Jew, half Jew, half Italian. Italian. And now Bardo, how do you eat in the office around him? That's tough for you. Deep down, it's tough. It's tough. It's yeah. tough for him. Yeah, I'm telling you, he he doesn't want to be a bad. Per he doesn't want to feel that yeah. way. But it's in there. Yeah. When like when like you know Bardo will send an email like, "What do you guys for lunch want for lunch?" And Jim and Tom will say, "Ah, well, anything. Want to get spaghetti and meatballs?" Yeah. He'll write, "Preposterous, disgusting, disgusting." Yeah. Yeah. Bardo will be like. <laughs> I guarantee you, if you just put your ear to, to Bardo's uh, uh, door, you'll hear, uh, 
Yeah. Just once you think he's jerking off, he's not. He's size. He's of pain. dry heaving. It's painful. The wasps became, the, yeah, at some point they just became very, very proper. Right. They just became and that's how they are. The Brits are very proper. That's the way they did warfare back then. Right. It was a gentleman's game. They Shit. wore red coats like fucking idiots. Yeah. I mean, that's the easiest way to spot somebody. Dummies. Americans, red, white, and blue. We figured out camouflage, baby. That's what it Blend is. Blend in with your environment. Imitate yeah. the animals. That's what it is. And wasps, white, Anglo Saxon, uh, Anglo Saxon Protestant, uh that that's what that means. And um, just for the, you know, because some people don't know what wasp is. I mean, Debo's over here thinking like, why, why are they mad at bees? Debo doesn't fucking know. <laughs> you know? Debo's like, I hate bees. I, I'm deathly allergic. I cry at the end of my girl. Debo don't fucking know. So, He's so you, a pilot. Cause. Yeah, Debo's a pilot. Yeah, this wasps don't fly that high. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. But uh, so 17, uh, 1765 stamp back, we go fucking ape shit. Then, basically what happens is, is Benjamin Franklin says no taxation without representation. So he's basically like, look, all you got to do is represent us in Parliament. That's it. And we're good. You can tax us whatever you want to do. Basically, the British government says no. So shit starts to go down. And, of course, July 4, 1776. Big fuck mistake, fuckers. Yeah, big mistake. First of all, let's just point it out. If you're listening and you're from Britain, big mistake. Benny Frank offered you a deal. Yeah. He gave us a good deal. It good was deal. a good fucking deal. Now, if you're a basketball fan, James Harden, he's leaving. He's That's going it. to Houston. Yeah. That's what happened. Now you're about to get fucked up. We're about to become the MVP, baby. Yeah. You could have fucking did whatever you wanted to us. You could have taken shits on our chest, whatever you wanted. You all got you, greedy. All you had to do was represent us in Parliament. But we you wanted want... one seat. That's it. One fucking seat. Give me one asking. seat. But, yeah. So, basically, British government says no. Because they say, you know what? We give you guys enough already. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? You give us enough. You treat us like pieces of shit. What have you done for me lately? What have you ever done for me? You make us go fight in your wars. Like, we don't want to kill French and Indian people. No. That's not what we're about. No. no we like them. They're yeah. nice people. It's a hustle town. Even back yeah. then, we like to make money, drink. They'd go to the taverns. I love how everything back then revolved around taverns. Taverns. Political meetings happened in taverns. Yeah. People hung out in taverns. Yeah. George Washington stayed at Francis Tavern for a week. For a week. You know he was banging puss in there. Oh, my God. Can you imagine the fucking wooden tooth? Could you imagine going down on a go with wooden teeth? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nuts, guys. Might be a little something extra. Yo. A little, like a little friction there. So, okay, so what this all sparks is this group called the Sons of Liberty. And now the Sons of Liberty are basically like a, a low down, like, group, like, in the dark. Like, basically, like, a, you know, like a precursor to, like, the Illuminati, precursor to the Freemasons, all that shit. Sons of Liberty starts. Benjamin Franklin, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Alexander Hamilton, Aaron Burr, all these fucking guys. They start, so they start to start meeting up at taverns, and they start to say, like, look, look, cuzzies, we're not going to be ruled by the British anymore. We're going to declare independence. Now, back in the day... You know, there was no Twitter, no nothing. You had to basically go house by house, colony by colony, you know, what will eventually become state by state, and let everybody know, listen, fuck the British, we're independent now. Because the, 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 the British army was up and down the 13 colonies. I mean, you know, they had people stationed here. So, you know, how was I supposed to know, even if I lived out along Long Island, you know, that, you know, in little taverns in New York, we're starting to stage our independence? I don't know. So it took a while for the independence to get around our country didn't happen overnight. Right now, just fucking tweet it out. Right now, I, it goes quick. I would send a tweet right out. You'd actually have to get on a horse and go and tell people. That's it. You'd have to. But, you know, most of the city back then was just lower Manhattan, a that's, tiny fraction of lower Manhattan. That's all and it was. It was just farmland out in Long Island, and but there was a lot of loyalists out there. See, here's the thing. He, okay, so if you, if you know a little bit about New York history, wherever you listen to this podcast, in New York, and even like you'll know, like Connecticut, uh, Staten Island, the borough of New York. So Staten Island, uh, New York is a very democratic city. Very democratic city. You know, we always go blue. De democratic state, of course, New York. But Staten Island, a little sliver of it. Staten Island, um, which is an island, uh, one of the five boroughs, island right off the coast of Brooklyn. Fucking me and Yanni P's hometown. Brooklyn all day, baby. Even yeah. though I was born in Queens. But Queens, Brooklyn, yeah. Yeah, but Brooklyn, it's, you know, my agent told me a few years ago, it sounds better if you're from Brooklyn. Yeah. So that's what I do. Um, so You're kind of like a Yankee spy amongst... Amongst Mets fans. Well, I'm on the borderline of Queens, Brooklyn. I know, I but all you your friends are Mets fans. They're all Mets fans, and yeah. I'm a Yankee guy. You're a Yankee guy. Yeah, yeah. So you get like to report about... back to Yankees fans about yeah. what these guys are doing. And because I'm not like a civil, I'm not like you know, cop, fireman, criminal, pilot. They think because I followed my dream and I'm, <laughs> I'm in art, they think that I just suck dick for a living. Yeah. That's what they say. Like, yo, you're just gay. <laughs> Why don't you lick the microphone? You're, you know, yeah. they think I'm gay. I mean, they want to come to my shows and try to get run, you know, puss run off, but they yeah. fucking think I'm gay bad. Yeah. Um, and that's what they'll tell me. They'll say, well, Chris, doesn't matter what girls are at your show. You, you want their brothers, you yeah. know? Whatever. 
<laughs> That's why Debo's always there. You want to go on a history tour with their brothers. I want to go on a history tour, yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, Debo said when he comes to Germany, he said he's going to take one bite of a bratwurst and stick the rest up his ass. That's what he said. So, you know, Debo that, yeah. goes wild. I mean, you know, the guy's got good ideas. So, um, so basically, so Staten Island, still to this day, typically votes Republican, uh, is, is, is typically great people, but they're typically very, very, very pro-America. They're very much like, we're not about, you know, we're, they're, they have more conservative ideas. And even back then, in the 1700s, Staten Island, throughout the entire entirety of the whole Revolutionary War, stayed mainly loyalists. They were loyal to the crown. So back then, you had the colonial, you know, the colonial freedom fighters, the patriots, not New England patriots, not fucking Tom Brady. You had patriots, you know, American patriots, and then you had the loyalists who, who wanted to stay loyal to the crown. And there were reasons why they wanted to stay loyal to the crown. A lot of them owned businesses that the soldiers would come in and out of. A lot of them uh, had just been brought up in that heritage of wanting to remain loyal. And as human beings, as Giannis and I, as we talk about this all the time, humans are very scared of the unknown. You could be living in shit. You could be, it's Stockholm syndrome, right? You're scared of the unknown. So a lot of people were saying, we don't, I don't know what freedom's going to look like. So I'd rather just not do that. And I'm just going to stay loyal to the crown. So they did that. Even also, can, also British propaganda. Sure. I mean, they were running stuff. Sure. They were running press and stuff and sure. things like that. And a lot of those families were connected to British families. They made money together. Sure. A lot of those people out in Staten Island had land and, yeah. you know, uh, they were sending shit back to, you know, they were, they were getting laced off with the, money. Of course they were getting so, laced off. Yes. Yeah, they were kind of. So were, it's like, it's, it's easy to say right now, well, like, you know, how come, how could you not, how could you not want to fight for freedom? It's like, put yourself in their shoes right now. They so, viewed the, probably the Sons of Liberty as like ISIS. Right. To, to the Brits right. at that time. Right. Sons of Liberty was like ISIS. That's what it was. That's oh, yeah, what it, it was is. They, they all look like Zach. They a, all look like fucking Zach face. A revolutionary group that yeah. was like trying to, you know, I mean, put mess yourself, with their empire. Think about it right now. I mean, we're owned by China. Could you imagine if fuck, you know, what if what if what if I was like, you know what, I want to I want to stay I want to stay free from China. Yeah. You don't know. I mean, we want to do it, but then people are like, nah, I like being owned by China. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, a lot of, that was just a joke. I know a lot of people right now are stomping there. They hit fucking the brake pad on their trucks. Look. Yo, there was just a big build up on the BQE right now because I just fucking Yeah. I'm sorry about that, boy. You know I'm just kidding around. You're going to hear a lot of that on this podcast. Yeah. It's not for the sensitive. Yeah. This is history, not for the sensitive. Yeah, they're mad right now. Like, That's yeah. right. No, no, I'm not going to get my toilet. We're not professionals. We're not professional historians, but we are historians. We're not professional historians. We're history hyenas. We are history hyenas. So we just go for it. Also, the state of Connecticut, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, where Bardo, that's where Bardo goes to fucking jerk off. That's what, that's, <laughs> that's the wasp, that's the wasp fucking No, that's where he goes for his eyes wide shut. Meetings. Yeah, that's where that's where Barno goes to purge. He has yeah. him. They, yeah, yeah, they go. They put on like uh, they put on like animal heads and they walk around naked and they do yeah. God knows what. Do yeah. cocaine. They sleep with whomever. Yeah, they drink the blood of uh, lesser people. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. So Bardo. So so Connecticut is another place staying mainly loyalist throughout the Revolutionary War. And the big reason why that happened is because places like Staten Island, places like Connecticut, these were these were the um. The, like the sought out after pieces of, uh, you know, pieces of land that that people in uh, England wanted. That's why, you know, and it's from Colin Quinn special. Go watch Colin Quinn special, um, not New York Story. Uh, yeah, New York Story. Colin Quinn special, New York Story on Netflix. Fantastic. And he said this, and it's and it's true, is basically um, London, New London, Connecticut, which is just a whatever city right now in Connecticut. It's, it's actually a nice city. It's, it's on the coast of, of Connecticut when you drive to I-95 anytime, you know, stop at a road stop over there get mcdonald's you fucking you could see new london connecticut you drive right through it and uh that was named after london england because that was their prized possession so they named it new london york new that's york an easy one to guess too right like but yeah. it's yeah it's like new but, london you, you but, but like colin quinn's joke is true it's like new london was supposed to be the thing and then new york is york is named there for as colin quinn says the sixth shittiest city in england and so new york was a nothing kind of city i mean it was something but it wasn't as popular they thought as 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 uh as london connecticut as new london connecticut so that's why even till to this day people will make jokes oh connecticut waspy you know you, you're so rich you're from connecticut that has roots back in colonial times because that's where the people from england the big wealthy wasp people from england wanted to come and settle in places like connecticut and even staten island because you wanted to be by the water because basically you wanted to be like look if i don't like it there i don't want to go so far inland i want to get on my ship i want to get my slaves and i want to go back to england that's what I want to do. So you think Staten Island now is conservative because the vibe of that 
originated from when the loyalists were out on Staten Island. That, and I also think prices got too much in Brooklyn, and most of the Italian mafia had to move over the bridge. <laughs> Those two reasons. Yeah, I was thinking. I was thinking maybe the latter might have had something to do with it too. But cousins. Yeah. Let me tell you guys something. Let me tell you something right now. Okay. The next part of this podcast. It's going to get fucking nuts because I'm going to tell Yanni P and Chrissy D right now, the history hyenas, we're going to devour. We're going to tell you. I'm going to just, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to give you this part for free. New York City fucking basically should be the capital of the United States because number one, you know New York's number one. Even if you're from Boston, you know everything comes in New York, okay? It's New York City, baby. We were taken over by the British immediately. Immediately. So it, by the war starts. 1776, in September 17, 1776, the war starts pretty much August 1776. September 1776, this entire city, New York City, ran by the Brits. Whole of, all of it ran by the Brits. But listen, there's always balance in the universe. There's always balance. So in the next part of this podcast, I'm going to tell you why actually, actually, it was the best thing to happen to us. Best thing to happen to the Revolutionary War was have the Brits take over New York right away. And I'm going to tell you why. And listen, this ends the the first part of our free podcast. Yes. If you want to listen to the next half hour, the second half, where we get wild, we're going to chew the bones of history. Yeah. In 1776, you want to go over to our Patreon page and, uh, you know, donate what you got to donate. Become a patron. Uh, and listen to the rest of the podcast yeah. behind the Patreon Go wall. to Patreon.com, do it, and then I'm going to tell you why it's okay to be a rat in 1776. Patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. History hyenas. All right. You guys have reached the second part. Patreon members, thank you so much for your generosity. Appreciate it. Supporting the Bay Ridge Boys. You guys are fucking wild. You're hyenas just like me and Yanni. So, look, I said we're going to talk about spies. In the Revolutionary War. It gets fucking dope and wild. But before you talk about man, you got to talk about man's best friend. Okay? And I want to turn it over to my best friend, Giannis Pappas. Check this out, Cuzzy Wuzzies. Let me see. Dogs. Dogs. Man's best friend right. played an integral part in the Revolutionary War. Cuzzy. How? And the colonies. George Washington, the father of this country, the man himself, larger than life, yeah. had a... Uh, Valuable, valued dog. Yeah, what kind what of dog? Was, his dog. His dog was a hound. And guess what his name was? Fucking. Uh, what was? I don't. I don't know. You would probably think American Liberty. You'd probably think Red, White, and Blue. You'd probably think Stars, Star Spangled Banner. You'd no. probably think American Fur. No, no. His dog's name was Sweet Lips. <laughs> his dog's name was Sweet Lips. Sweet Lips. And he brought Sweet Lips with him to the First Continental Congress in 1774. He rolled up with him on a leash, handed him to one of his slaves, probably, yeah. and went in there and did his business. Yo, cuz, do you think back in the day, like it, 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 like somebody would yell at you if you didn't clean up your dog shit? Do you think you had to clean up dog shit think, back then? I don't then? think you had to. Or was all part, it was all part of the, part of the road? Was, yeah, it was part of the thing. Do you think you had a better chance back then of stepping in dog shit or human shit? You, there, was a, there was a lot of horse shit. Horse shit was horse huge. shit. I mean, let's talk, talking about that period, that's how everything moved around back then. Cause horses. Can you imagine this fucking smell of just all that horse shit? Horse shit everywhere. Back then, they hadn't built those things where you could shit into the into that little canopy that they hold under the, the horse's ass. Yeah. Now they didn't have that. Well, they didn't have that then, so the horse would just shit. There Go was what? horse shit everywhere. Horses don't even shit; they dump. No. Horses take a dump. Dude, the amount of diseases. One of the most interesting things about this period, especially in New York at that time, where um, at by Trinity Church, where they held a lot of those uh, POWs. Yes. Most listen to this fact, cuzzies, sitting at home or in your car. You want to hear something fucking wild? Yeah. And then I'll get back into Marquis Lafayette. and cuzzettes, by the way, and cuzzettes too. Yeah, right. You want to hear something fucking wild? Yeah. What was it like? Six thousand plus people died. Six thousand, six thousand, like sixty-two hundred roughly soldiers died. Died in, in combat. In combat. Three times that number. Over eighteen thousand. Over eighteen thousand soldiers that were POWs. Died as POWs, cuz. Fucking wild. How is that? wild is that? Everyone always thinks about the dangers of the battlefield, but back then, back then, the real dangers yeah. was Mother Nature, cuz. Yeah. Was 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 disease. Yo, cuz Purell wasn't even invented yet. Wasn't. So there was germs. That's how a lot of the British actually tortured the POWs. They just let them catch yellow fever and die slowly. They were, Starved them out. There's a famous uh, 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 prison ship called the Jersey. 
and um, it was off the, you know, right off the coast of uh, of New York Harbor, right in downtown, right if you know Battery Park City, it was in the Battery. That you know, a lot of that, a lot of that down there is landfill. But back in the day, you know, the Battery is where you know British fleets would come in, right in Bowling Green Park. That's where they entered. And a lot of times, if 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 British, if the British government, okay, if they, if you committed treason or you did something that was, you know, punishable by death, if they liked you, if they liked you, they'd shoot you in the head or hang you. That's what they like to. They say, you know what? You're going to die like a champ. We'll fucking put one between your eyes or we'll hang you. No problem. If they didn't like you, they would send you to the prison warship, the Jersey. So you would think, oh, but you're sending me to prison. No, because they knew you were going to die a slow, agonizing death. Because the chances of you surviving the Jersey were small. Very, very, very small. As a matter of fact, at some point during the war, because it was it was killing it, now it's starting to kill British soldiers. With about eight thousand prisoners, prisoners POWs, weakened and malnourished and dehydrated and and fucking sick of shit, they sent it out into the middle of the water and they just lit the whole thing on fire. Yeah, lit the whole thing on fire. Slowly burned them to death. Slowly burned them all to death. The Isn't British that... were brutal, man. Brutal, cause brutal. Yeah, I'm. You know, I my family line at that time didn't even have a horse in the race. No. But if I had known, if my peoples who I'm made up of had known all the way from the Greek islands that I'm from, had known what was going on over there, we would have sided with who? Yeah. The Americans. Because I'm Because we're be, freedom fighters in my blood, cuz. I'm going to be honest with you, though, cuz. Back in colonial times, if you moved around with those glasses and a ponytail, I'd punch you right in the face. <laughs> I would want to punch you right in the face. You, you yeah. Because we would be boys. Be like back, we would be friends back then, me and We'd you. We'd be boys, yeah. Would we be patriots or loyalists? We would be patriots. Hundred percent. It's him. I, I, I can't. I'm, dude. I'm Greek. You fight for the. That's cause. why. That's why Greeks don't even work at companies. All Greeks have their own businesses. Yeah. You, you own a cleaners. You own a restaurant. You have a diner. Greeks don't like having a boss. That's how much we love freedom. Right. I would be freedom. Ba I'd be on a horse. I'd have a, I'd have a horse. His name would be fucking Hot Lips. Yeah. And I'd be riding <laughs> around, letting people know. Yeah. That. King George the First is a fucking tyrant, and not in a good way. He's not tyrannical no. and like he wants to eat baked clams. I'm talking about this motherfucker's got to go down because I'm red, white, and blue, baby. That's it. Did he have a dog? It probably fucking little English bulldog. They stunk. Who? King George. He probably had a bullshit oh, of dog. No, or he probably had like one of those like just like dogs that were bred. Actually, the Great Danes were bred to just be the dogs of kings. That's why they're so big. Really? Just to sit with kings and look massive. Yeah. Also, uh, a lot of those little dogs were just were just bred to sit on king's laps. But check this crazy fact out. Let me tell As Chris was telling you, the French helped us because they hated the British. Yeah. The British and French hatred goes all the way back to the Battle of Hastings. We'll cover that on another fucking podcast. I told you we're fucking wild with knowledge here. Yeah. Doesn't sound like it, but we know what we're talking about. The British and French have always hated each other. But, like Chris said, the American colonialists and the freaking French, they teamed up. And the two, the friendship and the partnership that exemplifies that the most, Lafayette, Washington. Yeah. Those two dudes. Yep. They loved each other, right? Marquis Lafayette. Marquis Lafayette. You think, they, you, think they, you think they fucked around a little it bit? It could have. Seriously. Seriously. You think shit got gay back then bad? They looked good. Uh, wearing those outfits because, you know, you could, yeah. you could look attractive. That's a nice look. Dude, they look like ice skaters. Yeah. They look like figure skaters. Yeah. Everyone dressed like a figure skater. That's what it was. With with wigs on, cuz. I'd like to see somebody in the Olympics do a nice figure skating routine with a powdered wig on. That would be nice. Just come out there. I mean, those powdered wigs were a little feminine. They were like long hair. It was a little... And History's George, George, George Washington had... Okay. George... <laughs> <laughs> And George Washington had a nice butt. No, he was a cutie with a booty. He was a cutie with a booty. Yeah, but if you go down to Wall Street, if you go down to like right where the New York Stock Exchange is, they show a Federal Hall where George Washington supposedly um, received the uh, uh, nomination for presidency um, uh, for commander in chief after we won our independence. If you go look at that statue, I took a video of it today. It's up on my Instagram. They made a nice statue of him. He's about 18 feet tall, but they gave him a puss. <laughs> They gave they him a puss. Him a puss. They, I saw that. I noticed that. They didn't give him a dick. They gave they gave him a slip. They gave him a puss. He's got a puss. And it's a long puss, and too. They gave him a long, which is fine. I mean, yeah. you know, women power, I'm all about it. Feminism, all that shit. But I'm telling you, he's got a full-blown, he's got an FPP, full-blown Yo, puss. what if we found out that George Washington was was a woman or a hermaphrodite? How wild would that be? Or if he, or if he, or if he would felt like he was a woman, was trapped inside what used to be a man's body. I'll say. More recent, seriously, what? Do you think you couldn't, you couldn't trans, you couldn't, you couldn't be transsexual. Dude, back intersex then. people have always been around. I wondered what they did with them. That's for another podcast. Intersex people have always been around. 
meaning they were born with both male and female genitalia. Because if you wanted to be a cross-dresser in the colonial times, it was you fucking came out every day dressed like a woman. Or you were just French. That's what True. they did. That's what Bardo's people did. What, what do you mean? I mean, they would, they would fucking dress as women. They would put on goat's heads, bangs each other, and they would chop lesser people's heads off in guillotines. That's, that's what the, And they eat cheese. That's what Bardo that's does. That's what they do. Yeah. And that's why the peasants stormed the fucking palaces, Versailles and all that, and they had a French Revolution because his ancestors were cutting people's heads off, and they were walking and around. And telling them to eat cake. And they were telling them to eat cheese and stuff like that. Yeah. But check this out, cuzzies. Yeah. Marquis de Lafayette, George Washington, as a token of appreciation, as a sign of friendship, as a sign of loyal uh, partnership, a sign of partnership, Sent him, sent him, because George Washington loved uh, hunting, and he had foxhounds, and he had foxhounds. So the Marquis Lafayette sent him a dog, sent him a dog, and that dog ended up becoming the American foxhound. George Washington is known as the father of the American foxhound. He sent him French hounds, and George Washington started breeding them, and that is considered to be... The first American foxhounds, cuz. So anytime I see an American foxhound on the street, that's George Washington's it's a baby descendant, right there. It's a descendant. It's a descendant. Yeah. The American foxhounds are a descendant of Marquis Lafayette's gift to George Washington of French hounds. Next time you see an American foxhound, if you don't get down on one knee, you're a fucking piece of shit and you're loyal to ISIS. <laughs> exactly. That's basically what we're trying and to say. And guess what he did? Guess what he did? And guess what the American foxhounds are considered? What? Better. Better. They're Number. better than the French hounds. Why? Because we're fucking American. We make everything better. That's what we do. We make it bigger. We make it better. That's right. All right, cuz. Thank you for telling us about dogs. That's you a know, nice but, little know, nature note, cuz. Yo, yo it's a, this is a podcast about history and nature. A, we're talking about what's happening during the time. Horse shit and fox hounds. That's what it is, cuz. I mean, we're, it's history hyenas. That's right. You know? Okay. So what I said before was it's actually a little bit of a blessing in disguise that New York got captured by the Brits right away because what happened there was is George Washington. Now, see, George Washington, like almost, like I said, like almost every, not almost, everybody that fought in the Continental Army, including the general, George Washington, used to fight in the British Army. Oh, this is where it gets good. Used to fight in the British Army because in the French and Indian War because we were British subjects. So in the British Army, in the French and Indian War, when uh, Washington was fighting for the Brits, he learned espionage. So Washington was a master at espionage, and he said, Cologne, now that New York is gone, and New York, and the reason this historical significance of New York back in the day wasn't because we had dope pizza and the New York Yankees. Not yet. That wasn't why New York was dope. Not yet. That, and Fashion Week. That wasn't it. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, Robert De Niro, not yet. Not yet. We didn't have Bobby D yet. The, re the big reason why is because, for tactical reasons, because New York split the northern colonies and the southern colonies. So when New York was lost, it was pretty much there was a northern campaign that Washington was fighting, and then there was a southern campaign that the southern states were fighting against General Cornwallis, the fucking... And then we had a bunch of generals thrown in, but basically General Cornwallis from the British Army was the one who was fighting the southern campaign. So what happens is Washington says, okay, now we got taken over. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of loyalists in New York, but there's also a lot of patriots that are just trapped because basically the British soldiers are surrounding them. So what Washington does is he gets word to a couple of trusted confidants who are basically trapped there and says, I need you guys to start spying. It was British headquarters. This wasn't just a bunch of Brits. This was the headquarters of 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 the entire British uh, army was in New York. So he was... Their empire stronghold on the colonies... Was in New York was City. Was in New York was City. In, was basically downtown Manhattan. Yeah. So Washington knew that. Washington said, look, we lost it. He tried hard. He tried hard to, um, to, to defend it, but unfortunately, uh, there was only five main roads back then that went in and out of New, uh, lower Manhattan and Brooklyn. That was basically New no, York. No, in Brooklyn. There was five main roads in Brooklyn. But... And he armed four of them, and he only left five dudes on one. In, yeah, in Jamaica Path, it was called, and that's yeah. where Britain sent their entire fucking army. Yeah. And in Prospect Park, if you guys know Prospect Park, there's a huge hill there, which I know that hill. You know that Running hill. that hill's Running tough. that hill's a bitch. It's where you, you know, used to get, where Giannis and I get jacked every fucking morning. Absolutely. And that's where Washington sent his entire army as the stronghold, because they're like, they got to come up this hill. But because they had secretly gotten through the one pass that uh, Washington did not defend, they came up the back way, and we got surrounded, and we basically just had to peace out. Yo, Washington was dope at retreating. 
He was. He was dope at giving up. He was like, I can't do this he anymore. He knew when to fucking, he knew when to fold yeah. him. Yo, in a way, I feel like I'm descending to Washington because that's how I am with relationships. When shit gets hard, I'm like, I'm fucking out of here. And girls get mad at me. But yo, I fucking am getting puss. Yo, but the yeah. colonialists got fucking beat bad. They got their fucking the asses kicked. Bad. And there was a group called the Maryland 400, which is actually like the Mar Maryland like 250, we found out. 260, two, yeah. 250, 260. What they did is they basically sacrificed almost all of them. I think only 12 survived. They said, we're going to sacrifice you. We're going to fight the entire British army right now. Like thousands of British dudes, we're gonna fight them. So most of the, so you guys can just leave, and we'll hold them off. And they did that. And uh, uh, right now, um, that's how New Yorkers that, get down. Yeah, that's how we do. We, we, you know, we sacrificed. Yeah, that's what we do. It's like, yeah, yeah, like when I, I like when nine eleven happened. We were all ready to fight. Yeah. Right that's how fight. New Yorkers are. That's what it is. We'll sacrifice ourselves. Let's, yeah, I but mean, we got beat bad. We got beat. Yeah, we got our asses kicked. Yeah. And uh, most had of to the, retreat. Most of the bodies of, of the of those Maryland 400 are buried uh, in Gowanus Canal. If you're ever down there, that, that's where most of the bodies are. But they so think they that's what they, yeah, think. they think. So we lost New York right away, as we said. But that, like I said, that was okay because the spies. So we now we have a couple of big time spies. We have a spy in Setauk at Long Island named Abraham Woodhull, who's a cabbage farmer, who uh uh he went to school with one of uh, General Washington's trusted uh, majors called Major Ben Talmadge. They grew up in Setauka together, and Talmadge was a sick freedom fighter, very high up, you know, one of Was in Washington's main cabinet. He recruits uh, uh, Woodhull to spy from Setauka, because the Long Island Sound, he would come from Setauka, through, because the Brit Brits came through Long Island. That's kind of another uh, thing that they did, is they took all of New York. They took the entire island of Long... They took the entire landmass of Long Island, and then they came down, and they fucking... Uh, and they took Brooklyn and Manhattan. So, there's British soldiers everywhere. T uh, uh, Woodhull would risk his life almost every day, uh, uh, or every week, taking information that he would hear in Long Island and take it down back to Washington's headquarters, which I think at the time were in Connecticut. He would just cross the Long Island Sound. But how, how Woodhull would get the information is there was another guy. There was a couple of guys. There was a guy named Austin Rowe. Um, and then there was, uh, uh, what's this fucking idiot's name? Not Oh, Robert Townsend. Austin, not an idiot. He's a patriot. I'm an idiot. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> Uh, Robert Townsend and Austin Rowe. They basically Robert Townsend was co-owner of a of a of a pub there that where all the British soldiers used to drink and all uh, newspapers used to come out. It was called the Rivington Gazette, right on Rivington uh, Street. So, what they would do is. Townsend would just be pouring brewskis. These British soldiers want to go get fucked up. I yeah. Mean, yo, you're across the ocean. You know, the, you, you're away from your wife and your kids. You know, you're in London. You, you're in beautiful London. Now you're in New York. I mean, you don't know what this is. You think we're all filth bags. You know, we, we're all gross. I mean, the, the head of our army's got fucking wooden teeth. Yeah. I mean, that, that's literally the guy we anoint that's got wooden fucking teeth. Yeah. So we're just d British soldiers drinking, carrying on, having a good time. Little did they know that the guys pouring their brewsks. Robert Townsend was listening to everything they said, and General Clinton himself, who was the kind of the counterpart in a way of George Washington um, for the Northern Army of Britain, would go in there, drink brusques, and he would basically spill ideas to the soldiers. Yo, we're gonna be, you know, we're gonna take Charleston, South Carolina. You know, we're gonna we're gonna flank our army. We're gonna divide our army. We're gonna fucking, you know, uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna try to we're, we're gonna take Valley Forge. I mean, the, there was a disaster at Valley Forge. We lost half our army, but Washington. You know, even only even knew to cross the Delaware because it's spies. It's the only reason he fucking you know it, it, it was a spy warfare game back then. What, what it's always it's always huge in war. Yeah, huge in war. Yeah, you need to you need to have spies. You need to have rats. Yeah, I mean, that's what you need to have. I, I mean, yeah, the intelligent intelligence in warfare has been since the beginning of time has played an important role. Has been an important aspect of right. of conducting war since the beginning of time. Right. So this so. Woodhull and Townsend, they eventually called the Culper Spy Ring. It was supposed to be called Samuel Culpepper, and then they didn't like the name, so they said Culper. So if you ever heard of the Culper Ring, that's what we're talking about right now. Samuel Culper, who was Abraham Woodhull, which we only found. Yo, these secrets were so, were so tight and so close to the chest. Still to this day, historians, dope historians, like not hyenas. I'm talking about people who went to school for this shit, actually still don't know every single member of the spy rings. Wow. And some of the British people who they think were members of a British spy ring could have actually been colonial spies. They that's how some of them they just know. Like they know what George Washington's number was. Because we go by numbers. That that's how it was. They weren't just calling themselves Abraham Woodhull, Robert Townsend, George Washington. It was, you know, spy number seven oh five, spy number one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. So what without those spies, without Washington having spies 
inside New York City, he would have never known some of the biggest moves that the British Army was going to make. So, look, war is about, it's all about fudging the numbers, and it's all about spying, and something you got to do dirty shit. Like, okay, the Battle of Saratoga. The Battle of Saratoga is the turning point of the American, Re American Revolutionary War. That's what they say. And basically why it's the turning point is because, listen, truth be told, I'm going to be honest with you, France was watching from afar. They didn't, they didn't, they hate the Brits. Of course they hate the Brits, but the main prize was North America. So they were saying, look, whoever we think is going to win this war, that's who we're going to go with. Yeah. So what happened is Battle of Saratoga, we did win fair and square. We won it. But when we sent the numbers back to France, we fudged that shit, cuz. Gotta fudge we it. Fudged. Yeah, we said we beat them bad. bad. Truth be told, we didn't beat them bad. Yeah. We didn't beat the bad. France was like a, like a, uh, a big wealthy donor. Yeah. Who donates to both parties. Yes. And it's like, all right, look, I'm hedging my bets. Whoever wins, yeah. you know, I'm with you guys. That's it. Yeah. So we won. But by they helped us bad. Oh, of course. Yeah. They, you know, we won by the skin of our teeth. They were rooting for us. They were rooting for us because yeah. they don't like the Brits. No. You know, deep down, it's like, I just don't like you. Yeah. It's kind of, they, they, they were fighting. They've been fighting since 1066. Yeah. They've been, Brit, uh, Britain and France have been fighting. So basically, we told when the Battle of Saratoga, we said, look, we told France, look, Lafayette, all these dudes, the king, King Louis, we said, look, dudes. We beat the shit out of Britain. We're going to beat the shit out of them some more. And then France said, okay, we're going to send our entire army because we hate Britain. And that's why it's the turning point of the war. Because to be honest with you, yo, Giannis, I'm going to say this. And you know I mean? No disrespect. And you know I bleed red, white, and blue. You know I'm a patriot. Dude, you know fucking me, cuz. You know I'm a patriot. I would never question your patriotism. Don't quit. You know, cause if you I found out you were a spy, if I found out you were on some Benedict Arnold shit. No. It would, if you on some Donnie Brasco shit, never. it would break my fucking heart. Because if I knew you were working out with ISIS and you were hanging out with Zach no. in no. Astoria, no, creating bombs in a basement, no, like he like the reason why he's got he's got tape on his glasses, yeah, because he's probably using the pin that holds it together, yeah, to put into it, probably to put into an explosive he's device. He's probably got radium all over his eyeglasses. I mean, it would break my heart because I can't even grow facial hair to be an ISIS. That's why it grows patchy because I'm yeah. a patriot. If so I found American out you were Benedict hair. Arnold, I would fucking we'll never do it to you because. But Me and Debo would fucking kill you in your sleep. Cause. No, I would never do it. But I, but I'm but I'm gonna be we honest. We do it for the Mets and we do it for America. But what I was saying, cause is 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 I, I I'm gonna tell you the truth. We wouldn't have won the war without France. We couldn't have won, even though we're patriots and we don't die and you can't kill us. We weren't gonna win if Britain didn't if France didn't send their entire army. That Paul Revere, you know, little mighty, you know, Paul Revere one if by land, two if by sea is true to a point. But, yo, he didn't ride the horses all up and down the 13 colonies. It didn't happen. We weren't a little mighty band of of American ruthless patriots that beat the mighty British Army because, I mean, France France won. Yeah, and you know what's funny? What's really interesting about history, and right now I'm picking our next episode. How do you like that? You know how we are? That's how wild we get. We get wild. Are you ready for me to pick the next episode? Yes. And I'm going to pick it off of the heels of the statement I'm about to say. Okay. In hist history is as much fiction as it is fact. Yes. I mean, you can't... When you when you have humans involved in telling the story, there's always going to be emotions in there, right? When you hear about the Revolutionary War and you hear about the, that period in the founding of America, all the emphasis is always on the colonists. Right. It's always on the Americans and George Washington and stuff like that. But what you just said is a fact. Right. We could not have won without France. Truth. That goes for every revolution, every uprising. In history. Right. There's always some help from some strong... That doesn't really make it into the history books because they want to keep that propaganda going. That's right. why you got statues of George Washington 18 feet tall. He was a great man, but he had fucking wooden teeth. That's Without the is. French, a guy with wooden teeth couldn't win it on his own, cuz. No chance. He retreated no a chance. lot of times. And, yo, but he was a master at retreating. That's why he kept his army whole. He wasn't, but he also got lucky with that fog when they retreated off oh, of Long man. Island. Tell him about that. That's nature, nature right there. Nature, cuz. See how nature always makes an appearance. Tell him about the fog, cuz. He fucking, they, he's trying to figure out a way to get his troops out to retreat uh, back to. When we, were, when we were leaving New York City one night. After they got their asses beaten bad. We got our fucking asses handed to us by the Brits. We're in Brooklyn Heights, right by the Brooklyn Bridge right now, if you guys know New York, Brooklyn Heights, and we got to get across the water gotta we got to get our entire army uh, our entire army okay not a platoon the entire continental army we got to get them across the water on to get them off brooklyn onto the island of manhattan which there weren't as many british soldiers there we were able to escape and get up to uh get up to uh uh harlem harlem, harlem heights harlem, harlem heights right now but cuz tell them what happened fog cuz fog happened nature happened 
Yeah. It was, a, it was a rainy, foggy day, like a day when you got a good view in Brooklyn and you can usually see the skyline of Manhattan. Yeah. But Mother Nature comes in and says, nah, not yeah. today. Because we were evacuating them at night. So the plan was to evacuate them all, not to make a sound, no candles, nothing. While the British soldiers are sleeping, they say, say the army's right there, and we're going to evacuate our entire army at night. What happens is because we're moving so many people, and you got a couple of dudes who probably were acting like fucking assholes and probably drunk, you know, drinking rum, whatever. You just lost a big battle. What happened was is daylight comes. Now now it's daybreak. It's 6 o'clock in the morning. The sun's supposedly supposed to be coming out, and we're still ferrying people. But the fog. Yo, fog. nature threw a fucking Luck. nice fart. Luck. Fucking smoked us out. Smoked it out. And listen, that's why that's why you know Jesus was an American. <laughs> I tell you that with confidence. If Jesus was an American, how was it just foggy to save our country? Can you imagine that scene? Just like them just floating into the boats across, just disappearing into the fog. Yeah. British can't see him, can't shoot. Nope. We did not lose one soldier in that retreat. Zero. In a, in a retreat that was deemed to be almost impossible to not have casualties because the British were right there and yeah. they were looking to pluck us out of the water. We did not lose one freaking soldier because of that fog. Not one, cuz. American, one. we are efficient. And here's the next episode. I'm picking it off the heels of that statement yeah. I just made. No, we got a couple more minutes to tell you, but yeah, we do. go, go, go. Fucking Battle of Crete. We're going in. Cause Battle of Crete. Battle of Crete, World War II, we're going Nazis, we're jumping all the way from the revolution, and we're jumping to 1944, cause. That's what you want to do. I'm That's gonna, what I want to do. I'm going to come in with a piece of Spanakopita in my and ass And the that reason day. why I'm picking that is because the Greek lore is that, you know, the villagers, the Greek army fought valiantly, and because the Germans had to spend so much time in taking the island of Crete, they... Uh, they prolonged their invasion of Russia, and then that put them into the winter, and that's how they really lost the war. That's going to be a sick episode. But in actuality, there was New Zealand, Australian, and British uh, battalions there right. that really did the bulk of the fighting. But the Greeks, it's, the Greeks always emphasize the Greek resistance. And there was Greek resistance, right. as there was colonial resistance. Right. But without the, the, the British and the New Zealand and the Australian troops... The Battle of Crete would not have taken eleven days. Cause he's, and I don't think I don't think you guys understand how painful that probably was for Giannis just to admit. I mean, yeah. Giannis is so Giannis comes Suzuki sauce. That's how Greek Giannis is. Exactly. Giannis is the 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 top Greek, the top Greek, the top the fucking commander of the gay Greeks is Giannis Papas. <laughs> is Giannis Mykonos Papas. What's your middle name? Frederic fucking Papadudas. Giannis Frederikos Christos Papas. Yeah, I mean that that's not even English. Yeah. It's Greek. Yeah. So and like like you said, but we use that to our advantage, right? Because we've been conquered so many. You want to know why Greek names are so hard to pronounce, Bardo? You want to know? I want to know. You want to know, Chris? And this is bleeding into a little bit in the next episode. But yeah, go ahead. But you want to know why they're Just so hard quickly. to pronounce? You ever wondered why? Hi, I can't pronounce all these last names. Yeah. I can't pronounce these last names. We did that on purpose. So when the conquerors came, the Romans, the Ottomans, the Germans, and they're trying to say, "What's your name?" We're trying to remember you. We need to know who the spies are. We need to know who these fucking local spies are who are heading up this resistance. We want to know who the gorillas are in the mountains. What's their name? I said, "My name is Yanis Frederikos Christos Papas," and they couldn't fucking remember it, cause I can't it had too many syllables so it was always an advantage that greeks had over people that they couldn't remember fucking names because they're like who's the guy who's spying out who's the guy who's spying in our regiment who's the gorillas in the mountains i told you his name yanis christos frederico's papas and they couldn't fucking remember it i still can't because uh, i can't tell you how many times i just call you john because i can't remember Giannis. i just told you a history fact that's not a history fact that you didn't know it's fucking beautiful maybe i just came up with a new segment yeah, but a, lot a of history fact that's not a history fact that you didn't know boom well, a lot, but like you said, a lot of the history, like okay, one of our main spies back in the day was Nathan Hale. A lot Ooh, of people, this is good. A lot stuff. of people know Nathan Hale, twenty-two year old cutie. <laughs> Yo, you want to you want to talk about cute? Go look at the statue down in Se uh, at City uh, Hall. City Hall. They Park. made him Yo, cute. Yo, he's fucking cute. Ripped up, got his shirt ripped up. Nice sweet pecs. Truth be told, nobody knew what Nathan Hale looked like. Guy never sat for his portrait. He was twenty-two years old from Yale. George Washington sent him out to be a spy. Literally 25 days later, this guy gets fucking caught. I mean, not that good a spy. Not that good a spy. Gets hung right away. And, you know, you may have heard his famous famous uh, last words. I only regret that I have but one life to live for my country. Lies, cuz he was he. False. George Washington wrote that a couple of weeks later to mark him as a true patriot. Be like, look at how fucking dope this dude yeah, was. Propaganda. He told us. Nobody knew what he said. Right. That what he may have said something close. I'm not saying the guy was a pussy. He may have could hung, have been. He may have hung like a fucking man. 
He could have been, though. He, but the point is, George Washington said that, and that ties into what I was saying. Yeah. His, history is often as much fiction as it is fact, just like this podcast is going to be <laughs> half fiction, half fact. You know what I mean? Because just like being Americans, so we know so much about the Revolutionary War, colonial times. We know all about our figures, George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, all these guys, blah, blah, blah. Yo, the rest of the world, just like how we operate with Fahrenheit and inches, the rest of the world, they don't learn about our revolution. They don't know anything about it. They know about the French Revolution. Which we inspired. Which Exactly, we inspired. That started in 1789 with Napoleon Bonaparte, which Debo, you think you were taller or shorter than Napoleon? You think he was shorter? Yeah. Debo gets mad if there's a shorter guy in the room with him. Yeah, he gets he wants you to be the shorter guy. How tall are you? Pick up the mic. Pick up the mic. Uh, five eight on a good day. Five eight. Five eight. My ass. No, you're not five eight. <laughs> not How five, tall are you, honestly? If, uh, my license says five five. Five five. I might have no, lied. What was I might Napoleon? Lied. Five four. He yeah, he was a little guy. Yeah, but, Debo, but you don't have rage. You don't have little guy rage. No, no he, he accepts that's, it. That's he, called LGS, little guy syndrome. Well, yeah, yeah, which you don't have. No, no. I don't have that. I'm just no, a cool guy. And you're and you're a Mets fan. You got a lot to be mad about. I shouldn't be. I'm always mad on something. Mets make me mad mostly. Yeah, man, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Inside rage. Yeah. yeah. Inside rage. You were falling asleep over there. You were hung over last night. Debo got fucking trashed last <laughs> yeah, night. It was a long yeah. day. <laughs> Debo, got, Debo got 10 out of 10 drunk last night. Yo, Nathan Hale. Yeah. Do you think maybe he slipped with his accent? You Could've. think he slipped with his accent? Well, That's he's how he from got caught. Yale. Don't forget Nathan Hale was he from He probably Yale. had a pretty good fake British accent. He was walking around, hello. Hey. Hello. Thank so you. So where are they going to be? Would you like some porridge? Are these the positions over here? Oh, can and you tell me? And then he slept. He said one. He went, where are the positions over here? And they fucking uh, caught yeah, him. Said, he's yeah. a fucking New Yorker. Oh, you fucking Greek monkey. And then he just let out a case. And then he just probably went wild. He's like, fuck you. Fuck your mother. Yes. I'm a fucking, I'm a fucking revolutionary. Yes. Sons of Liberty all fucking day, cuz. I do They probably called him fucking cuz. Cuz, Sons of Liberty, cuz. And then they caught him. Then they caught him. They, they hung him up. Him. He said, hang me, cuz. Yeah, because it's hard to keep that fucking stupid accent going. Yeah. Hello. So where's you the can't positions do it. here? You, yo, you would have never been able to hang me with this head. I would have broke a fucking rope or two, right? Yeah, you got a helmet Big head. Big head. Yeah. They yeah, wouldn't have been able to hang you. And they said that this hanging spot was down in Battery Park City, but truth be told, it probably wasn't. It was on like 66th Street and 3rd Avenue on the Upper East Side. Um, yeah, and I wonder why they. I wonder why they put it down there. I wonder why they did that. Cause because people just pick shit. Okay, I mean sometimes there's no rhyme or reason. I mean I, I don't know. It's Look, probably I give credit to these real historians though because I think it is important to get the facts straight. Yeah, and it used you can't to just Google shit. You can't just Google. But I mean these guys do research. They do archaeology. They look through records. They right. figure it out, man. Right. They they get to the bottom of shit. Right. You know what I mean? They excavate. They get to the bottom. It's like for years everyone thought Nathan Hale got hanged downtown. Not fucking true, guys. And, wh and what he said and his famous last words are probably most likely not his last words. They weren't even his last. George Washington said that shit. Yeah. To to to. To keep the myth going yeah. of patriotism. Yeah. He probably got hung on the Upper East Side, right? Hanged? That, that's what they said. They got they hung him he up got, on the Upper East he Side. He probably got hanged where Zabar's is now. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what Colin Quinn says in his thing. He said, yeah, there's probably a fucking Starbucks there. Listen, I know we're New York guys and we're talking about New York. And this may sound a little regional to you, but guess what? New York is really where the country started. Truth. New York is where. So you need to learn about yeah, this. Because guess what, Cuzzies? I know you guys think. I know. I know. Right now, present day America, the first, the capital is Washington D.C. Guess what? The first one was New York City, as Mr. Pontus would say, baby. Baby. New York, New York City, City baby. Number, first capital, and the only reason why we had to move it is because fucking Thomas Jefferson, who I guess look, T.J. Even though he didn't like New York, Thomas Jefferson hated it. Hated New York City. He said when he would go back to Virginia, he said, "I can't wait to go back to my country." Yeah. So he saw. He thought New Yorkers. We're animals. I and guess Thomas we are Jefferson, animals. Thomas Jefferson, I know you're in the grave right now. You were a great patriot, but from one New Yorker to you, go fuck yourself for that. Yeah, fuck you. Fuck you for saying that. So he wanted the capital to be moved more down south. So first, for, after New York, it was in Philly while they were building the one currently now in Washington, D.C. And Washington, D.C., of course, was picked because it was right in between the northern and southern colonies. It was, you know, pretty much equidistant, which makes sense. But now, I mean, the capital should be Chicago. I mean, now, because we... We, <laughs> we want to be in the middle, right? you got to be in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, because... Yeah. I mean, D.C. wasn't even a city. They carved it out. They carved it out of Maryland and Virginia yes. as a compromise between the Federalists and the Democratic Republicans and that whole split that we're still dealing with today between urban people and rural people, between government people and states' rights people. Yeah. That goes all the way back to Alexander Hamilton and freaking Thomas Jefferson and their beef about strong central government or fucking states' rights, cuz. We're still dealing with this, but guess what? New York City 
is still fucking New York City. Still New York City. We bleed red, white, and blue. Absolutely. And the Revolutionary War itself actually ended, if you think about it, it actually ended in 1783, which we know, but it ended right here in New York, Francis Tavern is the place where George Washington finally, because the British, like I said, the war ain't over until it's over. The British got to go. So the British, Yogi Berra said that. That's exactly. And Another New Yorker. Talk about a true patriot. Yeah. Yogi Berra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. New York. If you're a New York Yankee, you're a patriot. That's right. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Um. So when the British finally left on evacuation day, they finally left. Which used to be a holiday. Which used to be a holiday. They used to climb the flagpole. Yeah. I, think it was I November, don't know why we don't do that November anymore. 25th, 1783, because yeah. he was, he's now it's Thanksgiving, kind of Thanksgiving holidays, but yeah, what they used to do is they used to, it was called Evacuation Day, and it's when the last group of British soldiers finally left uh, New York, and that's when the Revolutionary War officially came to an end. But just as an act of a fuck you <laughs> that the British had to do, just to be like you fucking, you know, which, listen, to be honest with you, I get it. You guys got beat bad. Maybe France hit their entire army, but you still fucking lost. Sorry about that. What they did was the last the last remaining British flag, which was right in downtown Manhattan, they they uh, nailed a British flag to the top and they greased up the pole just to be assholes. So now so, uh, some kid had to design these cleat shoes to climb the pole <laughs> and take down the British flag and put our stars and stripes up there just to be. So it's like that's kind of funny. That you guys did that's like a nice joke we made it into a holiday yeah we made it you gave us you yeah you gave us uh you, lemon we made lemonade out that's of it that's how we that's how we roll and that's what we did with your dumb trick of putting the grease yeah. in the flagpole because we're true blue Americans. and we we got it accomplished and the first football cleats were probably created from that guy exactly football yeah you didn't and, hear from me and then yeah and then the last well, the very very final act did is they're about you know I don't know how many fucking mile, nautical mile, half nautical mile, whatever, away on their Wait, British. let's ask Debo. He's Debo. a pilot. Yeah, because you're a pilot. How, how many, many nautical miles were they away? Uh, about 23. 23, 20, miles, 22 nautical miles. Yeah. Um, the kind of equipment you The last British ship was leaving. <laughs> the last British ship was leaving, and we were, you know, as co colonial patriots do, we were hooting and hollering, telling them to go fuck their mothers back in back in England, telling them to suck our dicks. They shot a cannon. The Brit Brits shot one last cannonball trying to fuck with us, and it landed right in the water. Just missed, dickheads. Yeah. You just missed, okay? Just like you just missed keeping North America, because that shit is ours now. That That's shit is right. fucking ours now. That's right. And, and you guys, you know, you hyenas, you just you just heard. Look, nothing we said was a lie. Maybe our methods were unconventional, and, you know, and we sound like garlic knots that can speak, but, bro. You do. I speak well. You do speak I would have been a good spy You would have been a fucking then. loyalist, and I would have cut your I fucking head no, off. I would have been a good spy. I would have killed you and Bardo. Me and Zach would have killed you and Bardo right away. I could exist anywhere. You could not get away with it. Yeah. Because you, you, you can't not talk like that. You sound like a loyalist from New York. Right. But me, I could go in there, and I'll drink tea with these guys. Yeah. And I will get... See, right now, see, I'm probably talking the way they talked back then. Probably just with like a little British twang, yeah. but also sounding like a little gay and American. <laughs> yeah, right? Like a, so I didn't yeah. sound like a garlic nut. I sounded like a guy, hey, I'm a loyalist, guys. This is how New Yorkers talk. So I'm on your you. side, and I'm getting the I'm getting the facts, and I'm bringing them back to my fucking brothers who <laughs> are sitting there in Fort fucking Green and yeah. Fort Hamilton. I'm giving you the fucking secrets. These are where these fucking red coats are gonna be. Let's go fucking blow these cuzzies up, cuz. Wild, wild. See, and you know what George Washington did at the end to celebrate? He went to Francis fucking Tavern, stayed there for a week, drank, and he definitely went down on chicks with his wooden teeth, cuz. 100%. Before he marched all the way to Annapolis and fucking resigned because he was a great patriot with his pussy that we know he had because of the statue that's down there in Wall Street. Yeah. He's got a vagina. He went down to fucking Annapolis, Maryland, where we went. Yes. And he gave Capital a, of Maryland. He gave a, a hair-raising speech yes. about how he was going to resign. He was going to resign his military life and go back to being a civilian because he didn't want the military to be in control of this great, new, beautiful country. And then John Adams became the second president, a.k.a. Paul Giamatti. But, <laughs> but yeah, because... But yeah, when he left New York, Francis Tavern, he was dep there was a couple of chicks walking around downtown with splinters in their pussies. <laughs> For sure, one hundred percent. We would not have won this war without spies. No, one hundred percent. I don't think spies. So. And it's, and th today's podcast was about it's okay to be a rat if you're ratting out the Brits for our independence, cousins. Otherwise, don't be a rat. Otherwise, don't ever be a rat. And if you if we ever find out you're a rat, we'll kick you right off Patreon. No, we're kidding. We need your money. Yeah. No, we don't need your money. We want your money because we want you to be a part of the community. 
That's why we want you guys to keep donating to Patreon. You're a part of our community. You're our brothers. You're our sisters. You're our, our non-binaries, whatever you want. We're with you. Thank you for all your help. Thank you for all your support so far. It's been fucking... We seriously can't do this without you, cuz, right? Nope. Cuzzies and cuzettes, we cannot do this without your support. So we really, really, really appreciate it. If you guys like the podcast, yo, fucking give it a like. Tell your friends. Send Giannis and I DMs. Just say, yo, we know you're, we know you're a True Blue fan when you address this as cuz. That's you right. Say, yo, cuz. We like this, or what you don't like, or if or if anything was wrong in the podcast and we were historically inaccurate, let us know about that too. Yeah. We want to know it all. Or you want to add something? I mean, yeah. we're going to start reading your emails on this podcast. So if you have something to say, email us. Yep. We're going to get an email address going. We don't have one yet, but we're going to get one going. It'll probably be historyhyenas at gmail because I can guarantee you nobody has that email address. No, nobody. So has we're going to create that historyhyenas at gmail dot com. Send. Your questions, your comments, we will read them on the podcast if they're freaking worthy. Thank you, Cuzzies. We appreciate it. History Hyenas out. Next episode, freaking Battle Creek. Next episode, Battle Creek. <laughs>